Welcome to this video and in this video we're going to have a look at how you calculate the radius of a star. So if you look up information about a star quite often you're going to have a radius associated with them but how do we actually get that? Well first off it starts with the HR diagram. The HR diagram is a plot of the surface temperature against the luminosity of known stars. So these are measurements that are taken and they're plotted on a single uh, scatter plot. And most stars exit or sit on the main sequence, which is a diagonal down the middle. So most stars there kind of sit there. As they evolve, they move off it and go various different ways. But for the purpose of what we're doing here, and that's where we're going to consider. So the surface temperature is fairly easy for us to measure. So we can basically look at the spectrum of a star and depending on where it peaks, so we assume that they are black body like, so they behave fairly similar to a black body. So therefore their color corresponds to their temperature. So on the right hand side, we've got some the spectrum of a few different objects with different colors and you can see where they're peaking. So if it peaks at around about 3000 Kelvin, it's gonna have a reddish color as it moves more towards the left hand side, it will go more yellowy white blue. So we can get that fairly easy to get that surface temperature knowing how they behave. Now we then need to calculate the luminosity. So in order for us to calculate the luminosity we first need to measure the apparent magnitude. So the apparent magnitude is how bright a star appears to us in the sky. So if we look out in the sky, take a measurement, that's how bright we see the star. That's not how bright it actually is but that's the apparent magnitude. So from the apparent magnitude and the distance, we can work at an absolute magnitude of the star, which is a, the magnitude from 10 parsecs. So all stars, their absolute magnitude is from the same set distance. So we've already taken a measurement for the apparent magnitude. We then need a distance to it in parsecs in order for us to calculate that absolute magnitude. Now we can do that using um, parallax. So if we take measurements of the star, positions of the star in the sky, six months apart, which is the orbit, the half an orbit of the Earth, then that's the maximum parallax angle we're going to get. Well, that is the parallax angle we'll get. So looking at a star, we can measure its movement with respect to the distant stars in the background, and we get an angle. Now, we can then use some geometry to get D, which is the distance to the star. The closer the star, the larger that angle will be, and the further away, then the smaller the angle. So we can get the distance by using that. Now it takes a while to take that measurement. We need about six months worth of data to do that, but we can get it. Now, once we've got the um, parallax angle, the distance is just one over the parallax angle in arc seconds. So we get that distance in parsecs, so that's important. Now this assumes that it's a small angle as well. So it's approximated to be a small angle. That's why we can use this relationship here. So once we then have an absolute magnitude, because we've, we've measured the apparent magnitude, we've also measured the distance of the star. We can then convert that absolute magnitude to a luminosity. So here we know the luminosity of the sun. We've got the absolute magnitude. We can then get that luminosity. So we've now got a value for that luminosity and we've got a temperature for the star. So we should be able to go about looking at getting a radius for that particular star. So the luminosity of a star is also expressed in terms of its radius and its temperature. And here you've got the Stefan Boltzmann constant. We've also got four pi. Now the only things that are variable is the luminosity, the temperature, and R, which is the radius. Now we know the luminosity and we know the temperature. So we can actually rearrange that for R, which is this expression here, and then we can basically get a radius for our star. So thank you for watching.